Okay, so we're going to prove this theorem that if x is in g alpha and y is in g minus alpha, then x, y and their bracket form a subalgebra of little g isomorphic to little sl2c. So here's the first lemma. I'm going to identify the Lie bracket of x and y. It turns out to be equal to kxy, killing form on x and y, times alpha sharp. So alpha is in like the dual of little h, technically dual of little h r, but let's not worry about that. Um, so alpha sharp lives in little h, which is the complexified Lie algebra of the maximal torus. How is it defined? Well, k of alpha sharp v is defined to be alpha of v. That was enough to define alpha sharp completely um, because k is non-degenerate. This is in a semi-simple setting. And here v is just an element of little h. Okay, so proof. For a start, um, let's show that x bracket y is in h. Right, because alpha sharp is in is in little h. So, if we're going to identify alpha sharp using this uh, formula here, it had better be in h to begin with. This is because um, you know alpha is in no, sorry x is in g alpha, y is in g minus alpha. So x bracket y is in g alpha minus alpha by the lemma we proved last time, actually the bit that we didn't prove we left as an exercise, is sum the weights when you take the bracket. So this is g0. And then we also proved, uh, zooming back to here, that g0 is little h. So that shows that x bracket y is an element of little h. To show that it's this element, what we need to do is we need to compute k of x bracket y with z and show that this is equal to kxy of alpha of z. This will be enough to prove that, um, that x bracket y is this multiple of alpha sharp and by definition of alpha sharp. So we need to prove this. So let's evaluate this. K x bracket y with z equals the trace of add x bracket y add z. Now add is a representation of Lie algebra, so add of x bracket y equals add x add y minus add y add x. And then we stick an add z in front of all that, or the end of all that. So let's multiply the brackets. We get trace add x add y add z minus add y add x add z. Now the trace is cyclic. You can, if you have trace a, b, c, that's the same as trace of c, a, b, which is the same as trace of b, c, a. That's just true for any three matrices. So we can cyclically permute these three matrices and what we get is trace of add x, add y, add z minus add x, add z, add y. So let's bring out the factor of add, z, add x and what we get is trace add x times add y bracket z. Again, using the fact that add is a Lie algebra representation. So this is now k of x with y bracket z. What is z? Remember, we're trying to prove that um, x bracket y is a multiple of alpha sharp. Alpha sharp is defined in terms of its um, killing form 
in a product with any element of little h. So we're interested in z being an element of little h here. So y bracket z is minus uh, z bracket y because the Lie bracket is anti-symmetric. And because z is in little h, this is equal to minus the weight of y evaluated on z times y. In other words, y is in little g minus alpha, so it's a weight vector for the action of little h. So z is in little h, so it acts, and the eigenvalue is minus alpha of z. So k x bracket y z equals uh, minus minus alpha of z times k x bracket y, uh, k, k x y. That's what we wanted to prove. Okay, so we've actually identified x bracket y, and the only way it depends on x and y is this scalar factor, k x y. The alpha sharp is independent of x and y. So that'll become important later, the fact that alpha sharp doesn't really depend on x and y. For now, let's finish the proof of this theorem. So um, let me get a new page. So what we have is x, y, and x bracket y, which is k, x, y, alpha sharp. So what I claim is we can rescale y um, that's just going to give us an isomorphism of the Lie algebra, rescaling one of the elements. Um, and we can rescale it so that k x y equals 2 over k alpha sharp alpha sharp. Why can we do this? Well, I mean, you can always change the value of the killing form by rescaling one of the entries because it's bilinear. So you just rescale and bring out that scale factor. The reason this is well defined is because k alpha sharp alpha sharp is non-zero. And remember, this is the same as k dual of alpha alpha. Why is this non-zero? Well, where is alpha living? Alpha is in little h r dual. So alpha sharp is in little h r. And we've seen that the killing form on little h r is positive definite. This is because we're working with the Lie algebra of a compact group. So in particular for alpha, it's a non-zero weight, so it has, it's a root, so it has non-zero uh, norm with respect to the killing form. So this is a well-defined finite number and we can rescale y to ensure this. Well, now all we need to do to check that this algebra is isomorphic to SL2C is to check that the commutation relations hold. The commutation relations are um, what? They are h bracket x equals 2x, h bracket y equals minus 2y, and x bracket y equals h. So let's give this guy a name. Let's call this h. And let's check that these hold. The third one holds by definition. Uh, so what about h bracket x? Well, x is in little g alpha. So this is just equal to alpha h x. So we just need to compute alpha of h. Well, that's the same as alpha of k x y a sharp. That's uh, alpha sharp. Well, let's bring this scalar factor out, k x y, and we know what k x y is. It's two over k alpha sharp alpha sharp. and then alpha evaluated on alpha sharp. But alpha evaluated on alpha sharp equals k of alpha sharp, alpha sharp, by definition of alpha sharp, right? So 
Remember, alpha sharp was defined by alpha of v equals k alpha sharp v. So this is just equal to 2. So alpha of h is 2, and that gives us this first equation, and the second equation is similar. So this tells us we have uh, an algebra isomorphic to SL2C. So just some comments. In this, I used the fact that we were the Lie algebra of a, of a uh, compact group to get this positive definiteness here. I don't need to do that, it turns out. You can just get away with assuming the Lie algebra is semi-simple, but then it becomes harder to show that k alpha alpha is uh, non-zero. So now we've shown that if we take a root vector with root alpha, a root vector with root minus alpha, both non-zero, um, then we get a subalgebra of our Lie algebra, isomorphic to SL2C.